I haven't quite got a door figured out on this yet. I've got an idea, uh, but I've got to get the thing up in the air to where I can work on it. Sitting down there on the floor, it's just too low. Plus, it's too heavy to move around now, so I'm going to build a stand so that I can roll it around. We've got some nice 5 inch casters there to uh, put on it underneath it. We've got a framework kind of laid out there. This is some 2 inch box tubing that I had. Same stuff I used to make the rotisserie for the airframe. I think it's 8 inch thick. 2 inch box tubing we salvaged from a construction project. It was thrown away from the old bleachers in the high school. So I have cut those down with angle joints and we'll get those welded up and that'll lower frame and then I'll weld those casters on there. I have cut some posts, some uprights we'll weld on to get some height. Those are 15 inches with the casters are 7 inches tall. They're 5 inch casters but they're 7 inch tall and then 2 inches of the box tubing that'll give me about 24 inches of height. I've got this uh, angle of iron. Again, that was salvage stuff off the high school bleachers. I've got those cut. They're all bevel cuts and they're set to uh, make a pocket that this oven can fit in. I was debating whether to weld these up with uh, MIG wire, which would be a lot faster, or the TIG. And I, I've never TIGged the steel before. I've been practicing on aluminum. But I think I'll go ahead and set the little Everlast welder up for TIG welding and give it a try anyway. I got the four corners welded up on one side on this. And my TIG skills are kind of limited, but they improved a little bit as I went along. Then I tried a vertical uphill on this corner, outside corner, and that didn't work very good at all. So we'll see if we can't make the grinder work on that. It's kind of a not a very good spot for me. I guess I used my left hand with the torch and, and it was down too low and outside corner, vertical uphill. It turned out like crap, but I'm going to go ahead and flip that over and do the other side and then we'll figure out some way to do those inside and outside corners. I got the frame cobbled together for this stove pretty much. Now what I have to do now is weld the bottom to the there's angle iron there. It's, it's laying upside down now, of course, the wheels up in the air. So that frame is the main frame and then the, the part that's on the table is angle iron. So the oven can fit down inside the angle brackets. And uh, everything's all cobbled up except for welding the frame onto the angle bracket. I've been TIG welding all of this and making lots of mistakes. Hopefully I'm learning. Well, I tried uh, using the, the foot pedal and that worked okay, but I was down so low it, it didn't work on some of the stuff. And so I used the 2T, uh, that stuff where those posts welded into the bottom frame. Uh, some of that stuff is uh, pretty thin. It, it was wire brushed to the rust and it's pitted. It laid out in the muskeg for three or four years or more. It's pretty pitted but a lot of it is rusty on the inside and so when I started welding it he'd hit those thin spots and it start blowing through. A nice thing about the TIG is you can drop the amperage down, the current down and uh, just barely uh, keep a bead going on it and build those holes up a lot easier than you can with the MIG. If I'd have done that with the MIG I'd have got done uh, been done by now. It only taken me a little while to do it but say I'd have blown holes in some of that tubing and it's kind of hard to patch that stuff up with the MIG. Anyway, I've been ma making lots of mistakes with the TIG. Right now I've been mostly using the 2T. I can get down in different positions and weld and stuff. problem with that is you can't control the current. With the foot pedal, you can let off on the foot pedal and drop it down. With the 2T, all you do is let off on the trigger and then start over again. Let it cool a little bit and start over again. One of the mistakes I've been making with that, of course I still get uh, contamination on my tungsten. I've just about wore out one tungsten doing this. Uh, you make make one or two wells and then you have to grind it down and that that's one mistake I make. Probably the worst mistake that I've been making is treating this like oxyacetylene welding. When the puddle starts getting hot I start uh, trying to slow down I'll, I'll pull the torch away and uh, then you lose your uh, gas protection of the weld and wind up burning it. That's kind of the biggest mistake I've been making. At least I know the mistakes that I'm making now, so I'm kind of correcting for them. And so I'll get this base welded onto the upper frame, and and then I think I'm gonna 
have to take it down to the shop and take my plasma torch down there and I'm going to cut out front section of one of those angles so the door will fit in there. That angle is about three inches, maybe four inches, so it's going to protrude on the front face up into where the door goes on that oven. So I'm going to cut that out with the plasma torch once I get it all together. There's the base of this all welded up, all finished up for, as far as welding goes. I'll take it off of there now and take it down and take the uh, plasma torch down to the shop where I've got air. Cut out the front of that angle iron there that goes in the front of the oven. There's the oven box up on its roll around stand. Tried a couple different ways to get it up there on it. Put straps around it and tried to lift it but we just didn't have enough room. There's just too much stretch and everything and we couldn't get enough height on it to get it up so we wound up tipping it over on its back and uh, tipping the stand up and sliding it underneath it and then strapped it down to the stand with ratchet straps and we just muscled it over put the brakes on the rear wheels so they wouldn't slide anyway there it is it's a lot easier to move around like that than it was sliding around on the floor looks like checking the, uh, the tracking thing that my uh, PID unit is finally in the United States. It finally got shipped out of China. I kind of called or sent an email to the guys I bought it from and let them know that it hadn't moved yet. I think it finally got moving. They checked on it. So it's in the United States now, so it should just be a few days before it gets here. Get that thing up there in the air like that and now figure out what to do next. I've got to build a door. i got to decide whether I'm going to work on this again for a while to finish it up or whether I'm going to go ahead and start working back on the airplane again but anyway that thing's all together stand roll around works pretty good it's all painted cleaned up painted sheetrock is a little worse for wear I'm sliding it around and stuff but it wasn't very good sheetrock to begin with so 